I'm seeing Upala Potty today. She's my cardiologist. Um, basically, we're going to be talking, I think, about the last um, tilt table test I had, which was at the hospital. It didn't go as it should have. If you want to see that video, you can click up here. But um, I'm going to kind of tell her what happened and how it went and see what she has to say. I personally want a second opinion. Um, a lot of people also, a lot of also, a lot of other doctors have also agreed with me that I need a second opinion, including my um, GP. Um, so we're gonna see how this goes and see what she says. Um, I am having a flare today, so I'm not the most happiest person in the world. I really don't know what um, I said on that video where um, I was thought I was misdiagnosed. My GP wants me to keep the pot diagnosis when I go out in places and he's also keeping it to try to help me get the wheelchair. Um, he's the one that first diagnosed he's the one that first diagnosed me with it so he still thinks that I have it and he's also was the one that urged me to get a second opinion so I'm trying to get a second opinion and we'll see if this lady can have help me get one. I don't know because she's the one that got me in touch with the other doctor that did the tilt table test. Um, so you know my the tilt table test I did a poor man's tilt table test, that's how I first got diagnosed. I've had like seven of those, all came back positive, so it's really hard for us to believe that my other tilt table test was accurate because the machines, like one machine was messed up and the other machine was messed up, so basically to explain it better, one machine they were taking off my heart, they were looking at my heart rate and then the oxygen level on it and the blood pressure thing was off. And then another machine they were using for my... Um, like my blood pressure and my oxygen and the other one they were using for something else. So they had three machines and each one of them was, could, pos could do every single function they needed it to do but for some reason they had, it, it doesn't make any sense, it's hard to explain. Like it, you, you would think that if a machine was off on the blood pressure then it most likely could be off on the heart rate and I wouldn't personally use it for a patient, especially when they're paying a lot of money to do a test and get an accurate result. So I, I think I explained it better in that in that um, video, but I, I don't know because it's been it's been a while. Um, but it wasn't it it's the whole misdiagnosis thing is kind of confusing. Um, we think the misdiagnosis now is that I don't have POTS, and we we still think we do. But this is my cardiologist, and we'll see what she has to say and see if she's going to send me to another person. So we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, if it turns out to not be POTS, I don't care. I just want a diagnosis that's accurate and that can help me get some treatment so I can start feeling better. So if it's not POTS, no hard feelings. But we need to make sure that I don't have POTS. Um, I, I won't, the treatment I was doing from POTS, I haven't stopped because if I do, I start feeling like crap um, even more. And um, since I've been upping the salt and upping um, water intake, I'm less dizzy to the point where I look like a toddler. I'm always dizzy, but I'm not always dizzy to the point where it's noticeable to other people. So um, sometimes I can look like a drunk toddler walking, and then other times I can look like a normal human being just walking, and I can get it by without using a walker and stuff. And so we're just gonna see what this has to do. You know, it might not even have to do with my heart. So, we'll see. If anybody was wondering about my text, I have um, gotten into a doctor but I won't be able to see them until October. So that's a long time away. And before I get any comments saying what happened to your ticks, I don't tick all the time and I'm not gonna sit here and fake ticks for you on camera when I don't need to tick. I can go hours without ticking sometimes or I can go about maybe five minutes between ticks or I can have tick tacks and it's just a complete burst of ticks. So the videos that y'all saw that I recorded of my tick attacks, those are tick attacks. I don't look like that constantly and I said that in the videos. So. But I finally did get into to get a doctor to I finally did find a doctor to help me figure out what type of ticks these are, and so in October we will start that journey. But until then, we're still in medical limbo on the ticks, and about every bang else pretty much. So um, if you're going along in this medical limbo journey with me, just remember do not give up. Um, you know your body more than the doctor does, and you need to listen to it. Just make sure you do because you owe yourself to the best treatment and to, to live the best that you can. And if you're not being treated for your chronic illnesses, then you're not living the best life you could. So make sure you don't give up. And I will update you when I get to see the doctor.
Hey, so I'm back home. I've ate and I've um, taken some nausea medication and I think I'm going to be taking a nap. So um, this is going to be kind of short. I'm just going to kind of tell you um, what she said. Basically, she is um, kind of out of, it's out of her hands right now. She doesn't, I don't know how to say this. She's a, I think she called herself a general cardiologist. So she's done all the tests and work that she can do to try to find out what's going on. So she says she doesn't think it's my heart, which is a good thing. Um, but also a bad thing because we're back to, well, we thought it was POTS and now it's not. So for sure, um, she said POTS looks like it was a misdiagnosis. Um, I still kind of feel like I want to get a second, second opinion, but um, she says from the last test results that POTS is rolled out and that it's not my heart. And so if it's not my heart, then it's somebody else's, somebody else, I need to go to somebody else. So she suggested that I talk to it to a neurologist about it so when I see my new neurologist whenever I can get that appointment made I've been trying to make appointments but I'm having issues with people hanging up on me because of my tick so my mom is going to sit down probably today and help me find some find a cardiologist the reason finding a car cardiologist is so hard is because I'm trying to find a cardiologist that will take Medicaid because when I turn 26 in five years I'm not going to be using the Aetna anymore that I'm using through my mom and so right now since I'm looking for a new cardiologist I thought it would be smart to just find one that's already on Medicaid so that in five years I'm not worried about it then and I don't know if that's a good route to do maybe I should just find a cardiologist and get diagnosed and then find one that takes Medicaid later that might be what I have to do because that's kind of what I was doing with Cantrell but you know not go to her so go to somebody else um, so if you want to find out what happened with her, you can watch this video. But basically, she's just a rude doctor and was gaslighting me. You know, I'm not having tics right now. And that doesn't mean that I was faking earlier when I was having tics. And, you know, not everybody's going to see it that way. But, you know, I'm not on here trying to prove that I'm sick. I'm on here to support others. Um, so, anyway, um, I feel very out of it today. I'm very sleepy. I've medicated a lot so that's probably a little bit of what it is because I'm just so much pain that I didn't care about getting high I just basically smoked a bunch to try to help with this pain because it's the only thing that I have that can help with my IC there's cannabinoid receptors in your bladder and in your um, for sure in your bladder I think they might be in your urethra but I'm not positive on that but I know that they're in your bladder and so um, it's helped my bladder, but most of my pain is in the urethra, so it makes me kind of think maybe it's not. But also the pee is, the, the urethra is the last area that your pee is touching you, and so, I don't know. It, it, I don't know. Anyway, um, basically I've been cleared by a general cardiologist of my heart, saying that my heart's good, it's healthy, and all that stuff, so that's really good. But also kind of leaves me back into, well, what is this? You know, I'm fainting. I'm having a bunch of heart palpitations and I'm out of breath constantly. And she says, well, it doesn't have to be your heart. So I'm not saying, she said, there's, I'm not saying that nothing is not wrong with you. There's obviously something wrong with you, but it's not your heart. So I have cleared you. Now you need to go to somebody else. So basically I didn't realize, I thought when, I thought when they were sending me to a heart person that it was for sure my heart, but apparently syncope which is fainting and all the other and a bunch of other symptoms that I'm having can also happen because of like your brain or other things that are wrong in your body it doesn't always have to be your heart so um we'll just find out how it is I guess we'll find out eventually what this is it's Oscar's tail but we'll find out eventually what this is it's just gotta be patient and stick with the and stick I gotta be patient and just trust the process of elimination basically because that's what all this is it's just the process of elimination until you get the right thing I guess the right wrong thing I guess if that makes sense so um was clear from my heart which was good you know um I do think I might call he she says if I want to I can call that guy and talk to him about the machines so you know because I'm not a doctor the machines might have been fine but to me 
and how I explained it to my mom, to me, it sounded like that wouldn't be a good way to use your machines. If you're using a broken machine on, like, your oxygen, but you're using it for your heart because apparently it's working for your heart. Like, if every, if one thing's off on it, how do you know that the heart thing's correct? I just, I, it's ignorance. And I don't know if there was actually anything wrong with the machine. I don't know why they specifically had the machine that way. I kind of want to go to a place that doesn't have machines that way. Um, and I'm going to see what this guy says. And he might want to redo the pots tilt table test. Um, they, sh they didn't do the whole thing right at all. Because, you know, they, did, they laid me on the thing and then immediately raised me. When you do a tilt table test, if you look it up, you're supposed to wait for 5 minutes or 10 minutes and then raise them. And then check it like 2, 5, and 10. And they weren't doing that. I don't even think I was up for 10 minutes. So, um, so we're just possibly, we possi there's a possibility we might still get a second opinion on the POTS thing, but for now, she says my heart's good and I don't need to worry about it. You need to start worrying about other parts of your body more, and I agree with that. So, um, yeah, um, I'm gonna go take a nap now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that I love you. Have an amazing day today. And thank you for being alive. Bye.